Would somebody like to give me a hand? Is there a garden in there? Yes, why? When I sat down on the chair, I looked up and realised it was none other than Peter Purvis. He said, you jammy bastard, and quick as a flash, I replied, don't be blue, Peter! <laughs> Um, in, a, in a live television, anything can happen. Um, I, I, I don't know if you remember Blue Peter when the elephant... Um, <laughs> Blue Peter is a children's television program made by the BBC and it's been going for 58 years. That's... A long time. You see, for this young whippersnapper, my Blue Peter life was in the late 70s, when at five past five on every Monday and Thursday, I'd watch the adventures of John Noakes, his dog, Peter Purvis, and a lovely Ashley Judd. Then there was that time I lost my shit when the Star Wars cast was on Blue Peter, and I always remember Kerry Fisher chewing on some meat that wasn't Harrison Ford's. Anyway, I got older and they seemed to take on any old whippersnapper from the streets presenting, but yeah, it's still going. And they're still giving out those Blue Peter badges left and right, including big stars like you, Jackman, here. So even though I was watching it back then, I couldn't deny it was a good magazine programme for kids. It wasn't quite my thing, but it did get me attention, especially when they had Star Wars guests on. But yeah, good memories. But I didn't pick today's episode, my guests did. So let's meet the Blue Peter fan and today's guest in the memory bubble. She's the only TikToker I've seen. Instead of double D's, it's double T-he's. She's so funny and worth watching on TikTok. It's my good friend, Jules E. Osbiney. Jules, welcome. welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome to the memory bubble. Um, so Blue Peter's what you've picked. Yeah, it was. I mean, do you know what? Talking about programmes that I liked when I was younger, I can think of like dozens. It's a bit like asking somebody, what's your favourite song? What's your favourite food? I went from one to another to another. And there were so many that I loved, but this was the one that was consistent. So I decided to go with Blue Peter. Yeah, everybody's favourite. It was lovely. Did you watch it? I, I kind of did. I mean, I was more into the programmes that came before it. So it was... Whatever was on He Man, uh, I don't know. There was other things on, and then you got to, you know, you got to uh, John Kramer's news round, and you think, right, we'll go yes. slow down here. And then you got to kind of, you did the excitement bit, and then you did the grown up bit, and then you went to Blue Peter, and then by magic roundabout, you're done. You're done. You were finished. And then Reginald Bowles and Cat came on, go right news, kids, f off. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, you know, I loved it. And I was just thinking, why did I love it so much? And of course, when I mean, I'm quite old. So when I was watching it, we really only had a choice of like the BBC or ITV. And yeah. there was Magpie on the other side, which yeah. nobody really liked. I was thinking about that the other day, Magpie. I thought it was always like, which is better, Blue Peter or Magpie? And exactly. as as that, that, I forgot his name. He came up with a big puffy ear, went, yeah, Blue Peter. Oh, I didn't like him so much. <laughs> But Blue Peter, I think there was something about it. First of all, I was obsessed with the badge. I mean, I've got to be honest. It was all about the badge for me. And you yeah. know something? I'm going to tell you a story. This will make you cry. Yeah. I got a badge. I wrote this really creepy letter to Blue Peter. Said, oh, I really love you all. I love all your programs. I can't believe I did that just for a badge. Two weeks later, a letter came in the post. There it was, Blue Peter on the front. I couldn't believe it. I opened it. Badge, just for being a creep. Anyway, I got my badge. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a postcard with all the presenters, and it was signed. And I thought, get in, I had a letter. So I go to school with my badge on, on the blazer, took my blazer off, put my badge on my jumper, just so everyone could see it. And then I said to the teacher, I've got something to tell you. It's like, show and tell. Yeah. He said, said, look, I've got a badge, and I've got a postcard, and they've signed it. You know what the teacher did? I'll never forgive him for this as long as I live. He said, it's not real signature. He said, it's just a photocopy. It's printed. Don't get excited. And then he did this. Watch this. Huh? Like that. And wiped across. And they were real. What? I know. I know. <laughs> Thank you. What a that is it's yeah. lived with me forever. I can't get over it. Thankfully, I've got a really lovely friend I know who managed to get hold of Valerie Singleton and get me another one. 
But what a mean thing to do. That was my first bit of injustice in the world. Yeah. Oh. But at least you got the badge. Do you know something? I've been downstairs looking for it. I can't find it anywhere. I just I, can't I don't find it. Now. It <laughs> but you, you've had it though. That's the main thing. It was all about that competitiveness as well with Blue Peter. I mean, I was just thinking about Blue Peter. And the one thing I remember watching the TV one day and there was a little girl on. I say little girl. She's a little girl now. She was my age. So anybody who said, and we've got Jennifer, age nine, I would, whoa, look now, just like I do now when someone says oh look she's 57 let me see let me see anyway she was nine this little girl and she was playing some beethoven symphony at the royal albert hall with a clarinet and i thought mm. and there's me with my plastic flute trying to master three blind mice <laughs> i didn't do it and there was a kind of inferiority complex going on with blue peter there was some very smart kids on that program i used to come in from playing outside to watch Blue Peter, because there was no, obviously no video. So it's Monday and Thursday. I'm sure it was Monday and Thursday it was on. I think it was about 10 to five. And then you used to watch Blue Peter. And of course there was the appeals. I loved an appeal. So every year yeah. you had to start saving, you know, the tops of a milk bottle or stamps <laughs> or rubbish in, and sending it off. So I used to do that. I used to think that was great fun. And of course the best thing about Blue Peter is you could make things. You could make, you could make Tracy Island out of bits of cardboard and rubbish, which we oh, now call yeah. recycling. There it is, that's all right. And then uh, just put it to one side to dry. When it is dry, all you're going to do then is just uh, add the tail, which is a piece of balsa wood. Yeah, that's right. I'm saving that's all that rolls in that. Save them. Wash it up liquid Save bottles. Them. Empty them. <laughs> what are you yeah. doing? I need them. <laughs> <laughs> and the toilet rolls, that was massive. If anybody threw a toilet roll holder away, it was, what? And yeah. I remember with the old sticky back plastic, we know what yeah. that is. I remember putting some pink paper around, like a bit of wallpaper and a bit of cotton wool on the top with some glue made out of flour from water. Seriously, we must have been poor. And giving that to my mum, God love her, when she was, I don't know how old I must have been, I must have been about 10. And, you know, even, she's not with us anymore. And even when I was sorting through things, there was the toilet roll holder. She kept it all these years to put a just in. I mean, the stuff they used to make, and suddenly they would bring it out and say, and here's one I made earlier. And I'm thinking, it looks nothing like what I've made. Yeah. And it was rubbish, complete rubbish I made. Play along with it, because I think I've been conned here. Because said, right, these are the things you want. You got your toilet rolls, you got your sticky yeah. plastic, you got your thing. But here's one I made earlier. But bollocks, she didn't make that. You did make that. Made that behind camera. Oh, I'm not bothering. Mom, I did the real thing. The best thing ever they made it was every year. Oh, I love this. I, I loved. I love it now. It was the Christmas decoration, the Advent yes. decoration. Yeah. Now, folks, this was. Um, it was two wire coat hangers. Right, with <laughs> tinsel wrapped round, and one was inserted in the other, and bits hung from it. Every year, I put my advent that skanky old coat hanger came out every <laughs> single year, <laughs> and that was Christmas. You know, Christmas was coming when that happened, but I mean, you know, it was a pro we because it's not, I don't think there's programs like that now. I mean, obviously, I don't watch things like that, but this business of it being like almost interactive in the 70s that you yeah. could get involved with things and they used to teach you about I mean things that you wouldn't even normally be interested in they used to hook me in constantly with you know tales of going abroad when they used to travel they used to go I don't know what they used to call it every year they used to go to another country and it was just yeah. fascinating because without the internet now all we if we hear of an animal we're not sure about you just have to type it into a search engine and there's a million pictures so when they you know showed us an armadillo with leslie judd holding it it was like what is that you know not <laughs> a or whatever, you know it was just it was absolutely fantastic so they had an awful lot to offer kids at that time but like i said there was always that feeling of inadequacy you know i'm, I'm really not going to be able to run five miles in six minutes like jeremy from watford but of course let's not forget the animals Oh, oh, it was yeah. all about get the out, animals. Get, get off! Get out, chef. <laughs> and I don't know which one it was. I think it must have been Petra, Peter Perv's dog. Yeah. Passed away, like like dogs do. I was yeah. devastated. I was absolutely devastated because for a lot of kids, 
that was the first time they'd experienced some kind yeah. of you know, sadness, death. And it was, at, and then they brought a new dog in who wasn't the same, and they had a cat. And of course, there's a very famous sketch, if anybody's not seen it on the internet, of John Noakes and a baby elephant. And the baby elephants just running around mayhem in the studio, just messing everywhere. The, the zookeeper's trying to hold on to his slide into it all. <laughs> yeah. That was that was oh, YouTube. TV gold. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Off you go. Bye bye, Lulu. Lucky, don't they? Uh, well, as I was saying, we'll see all sorts of very yeah. exciting things. Yeah. <laughs> Martin. I should go that way. Martin. I should go that way. I should leave her here to have a drink, darling. She's all right. I've wrote down a few little facts now. The idea of what I was going to do, yeah. the idea was one was going to be false, but I thought, you know what, no. They're all facts. Oh. They're all a bit vague. They're all a bit cryptic. So I was hoping you elaborate. Now, it might right. be easy because I think we've already mentioned one or two of these already. Oh, all right. <laughs> so for the sake of it, yeah, I'll go with it. But your first Blue Peter fact. All right. right. Blue Peter saved Doctor Who. Do you know anything about oh, this? Yeah. When was that? All right, this one is a case of obviously BBC had a thing about destroying episodes. You should go over the tapes, didn't they? Of the old, yeah. uh, not one of the one. They had no, they had no foresight, and they lost most of the footage of the, the series. I think it was the last William Hartnell series, the Tenth Doctor, and really? then, and, that, and that's where the Doctor changes into Patrick Troughton. Yeah, and they actually lost that. However, <laughs> Blue Peter had already showed the clip. So that's how that fo- the, the clip you'll always see something on these sort of either flashbacks and that is actually from right. Blue Peter, not from the actual episode because they lost it. So I Blue Peter. Know that. Yeah. Blue Peter helped Paddington Burr with his career. I had no idea. No. Michael Bond, who wrote the um, Paddington Burr books. Yeah. He was yeah. a writer. He was a cameraman on Blue Peter. And every Christmas, he used to do like storyboard of comics of, of his creation, Paddington Burr, for all the stuff right. he used to do at Christmas parties. So the point of then, well, I published that on one of the Blue Peter comics. So then, annually, they started printing yeah. it. And then some of the stories said, well, you should make that into a book. He did. I Ooh. love it. And there you go, oh, Peter. See. Blue Peter. This one I think you will get. Um, yeah. but Blue Peter used to do fact sheets, you know, when we're talking about building things. Yes, yes. And if you want the fact sheet out to build it, yeah. what was the most popular fact sheet given out? Was it Tracy Island? It was Tracy Island. 1993, over 1,000 yeah. people requested a fact sheet how to build it. I think I was one of them, to be honest. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what? I think I nearly did as well. <laughs> What happens is, what we haven't mentioned is, way back then, you had to watch some things in order to be a part of the gang at school. I yeah. mean, there was, you know, when you went back the next, did you see Blue Peter? Yeah, did you see Tracy? Ah, oh, it was fantastic. Or whatever. And then it was also Top of the Pops as well. If you didn't watch Top of the Pops, you weren't worth speaking to. And there was that. It was a bit like the charts and the radio on a Sunday night. Yeah. There was things you had to do. And, of course, that does not happen anymore. So, yeah, part of the gang, you should have watched the telly. Yes, I, I hope you weren't one of those people who are recording it on you know, the top 40 every Sunday. Don't speak! Don't speak! <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Don't come in the room because I've got my little microphone. Yeah. And it, the DJ sort of, oh, and they always used to speak the DJs. Oh, it was, I was number five last week. I said, shut up, that's ruined my recording. Oh, how <laughs> times have changed since then. I've forgotten about that. Okay, so is that my fun facts all done? You've I did that. you want them. You've got one last fact, and I think we've covered Ooh. it, but for the sake of it. Lulu once appeared on the, uh, Blue Peter. She ended up defecating everywhere. Why? Because <laughs> she was a baby elephant! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> we're out of the bed uh, with the bull signal. We're actually on the right. <laughs> the elephant. The elephant indeed, like you said. Google that. Just put Blue Peter, Lulu the elephant, and it'll come straight up and just watch it. It is, it's like a proper 1970s YouTube, TikTok, funny type moment, isn't it? So, but it it, you've got to see it or you haven't lived. Yeah. It is, and talking of TikTok, it's not where we can find you, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's, little... uh, oh, I'm obsessed. I don't know what's happened. It was about June last year when we went through lockdown. My daughter was doing it. 
I said, what are you doing? And she said, oh, it's nothing to do with you. No, no, don't look. It's nothing to do with you. I thought, <laughs> but it is. So I said, oh, I'm going to do one. I'm going to do one. I've done about 400. <laughs> I've done two today. You've done a few. Oh, well, she's nice. Oh, my God. How many? I, I just keep, I can't stop. I mean, it's, it's we're all big shafts on there, but I've got to say, there are some really funny, funny sketches yeah. on there. And everything's like 60 seconds. And I'm afraid we are in a, a world now we scroll, scroll, scroll. We don't kind of take too long to look. So there's some, there's some properly funny laughing yeah. stuff on there. So if you haven't been on it, I'm definitely going to, you don't have to do it yourself. So you don't have to put videos on, but uh, yeah, full of shafts. Love it. I'm yeah. sure we'll see more of you on TikTok, so we'll put the link below to find you. But thank you so much, Jules, for talking about Blue Beetle. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. I loved every minute. Thank you so much for asking me. This man wanted me to pay him a lot of money for the photographs. And while I was explaining to him how I felt, I accidentally bit him on the nose. <laughs> Quite hard. <laughs> Jason, you've been to Dundee to see a new museum all about cake. That's right. Rock the theme tune, sing the theme tune. Thanks again to Jules for taking part today. Thank you for watching. We'll end now with the themes of Blue Peter, done by this chap, and we'll see you soon for another memorable. Take care. <laughs>